Yes, Jesus read from Isaiah 61 when he went to his hometown of Nazareth and he stopped mid-verse. What does the rest of it say? Well, let's check it out, you guys. This is amazing and it pertains to our times right now. Isaiah 61, the spirit of the Lord is upon me, Jesus said, because the Lord has anointed me to bring, to preach good news to the poor. He has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted to proclaim freedom for the captives. And by the way, this this is a great video. Check it out. It's the One for Israel ministry has it. And it says it's a, it's this group of, of, of Israeli and other believers that come together where those October 7th uh, massacres were happening and they sing Isaiah 61. What's interesting is Jesus stopped and it talks about vengeance that God's going to have against Israel's enemies. Watch this. This is amazing. Jesus stopped mid-sentence and he said today this is fulfilled, right? So he kept reading, and release from darkness for the prisoners. Doesn't that sound like today a little bit? To proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. Then what happened? What does Jesus do? And he rolled up the scroll, gave it to the attendant, gave it back to the attendant and sat down. And the eyes of all the people in the synagogue were intently directed at him. I'll bet they were. And now he began to say to them, today, this scripture has been fulfilled in your hearing. Now he said this scripture where he read and he stopped at a comma, mid sentence, mid verse, he stopped, right? The acceptable year of the Lord. And then what happened? Jesus was crucified later. He paid for all of our sins. He came humble the first time. He came to save us as the humble suffering servant the first time. But then what happens? What, what does the rest of Isaiah say? In fact, here's a little in the Old Testament, you guys. You can see pictures of Jesus all over it. Here's a picture of Isaac carrying the wood on his back, Abraham, the father, carrying the torch in his hand, right? Going up what mountain? The same mountain as Jerusalem. And what happens? The father gets him to the top of the mountain and he lays Isaac down upon the wood and he binds him. And he was to be the burnt offering, which speaks of like Leviticus and other places like that. Speaking of a sacrifice to God and Jesus suffered this pain for you and for me. And there's pictures of of him all through the Tanakh, if you're in Israel, in the Old Testament. And you could check this playlist out right here, how to find Jesus in the Old Testament. And you're going to see lots of it. You're more. You're going to see it in Joseph's story. You're going to see him in, in Moses' story and many other places. So check that playlist out right there. So let's get back to Isaiah chapter 61 and what happened. Remember, Jesus was on that cross, he died and suffered and, and it fulfilled Isaiah 53. He was pierced for our transgressions, right? And by his stripes, we are healed. We see all of that in the Old Testament. But what happened? He's risen. He rose from the dead and he's alive today, my friend. He is alive right now. So almost 2,000 years later in Israel, what happened? We see these people come together singing Isaiah 61. And it was so beautiful. I loved, I loved that I listened to it all the time because it's powerful. It reminds me of the music when I was a little kid during the Jesus revolution, the Jesus movement. It has that kind of anointing. You need to check it out if you haven't. Check that out. But what were they singing? They were singing all of it. This part too, you guys, they were singing this, and this is the rest of that scripture. This is where Jesus stopped at a comma. Imagine a comma right here. He sat down. He said, today in your hearing, these scriptures are fulfilled. And what does the rest of it say? And the day of vengeance of our God, the day of vengeance. If you're an enemy of Israel, you better be scared. You better be worried about it right now. Just like those in Nineveh who, who repented, they turned to God, they repented of their sin when, when Jonah told them that God was going to come and destroy them. You should feel the same thing if you're an enemy of Israel right now. The day of vengeance of our God to comfort all who mourn, to console those who mourn in 
Zion. Where's Zion? Zion is Israel, my friend. It's always people hate that word. People say, you Zionist Christians, or you, you're into Zionism. God's not into Zionism. They say, oh, yes, he is. He's the one that invented that word. And here it says right here in Isaiah 61, he says to comfort and to console those who mourn. Where? In Zion. That's what we see, guys. God loves Israel. Jesus still loves Israel and has a plan for him. If you know Joseph's story, you could see that because what happens, he has a Gentile bride with him after he's raised up out of that place of the condemned and brought before the throne, made made the right-hand man to the throne. He has a Gentile bride with him. And then what happens? He saves all of Israel and he unites them as one family and they get the best of the land forever, you guys. So Isaiah 61, to give them beauty, it continues, beauty for ashes, the oil of of joy instead of mourning. Israel's mourning right now, you guys. The garment of praise instead of the spirit of despair, right? Don't be afraid. Don't be in despair. God is in control of all of this. He wrote it down in these books thousands of years ahead of time to give you comfort, to give you peace if you're a believer and follower of Jesus Christ. Okay? So, hey, God loves you. Don't forget, you can hit this playlist right here, How to Find Jesus in the Old Testament, and you will be blessed by that, my friend. God bless you.